Welcome to Tech Tools for Test Success, preparing for next generation assessments. If you have a Chromebook, desktop computer, or other electronic device, please log in and open the internet at this time. You will benefit more from this video if you can work along with what I'm explaining. You may also pause or rewind this video at any time. Today's tutorial will review digital resources available to you on the grades 9 to 12 American History Performance Based Assessment. This is a digital assessment and may be different from assessments that you are used to taking. It does have tools that will help you to better perform on the assessment. That is the purpose of this tutorial. Today, we are learning about the tools available to us on the new Ohio State tests. I strongly urge you to play with the resources and tools available to you on the test today. You do not want to waste time on the test learning how to use these features. That is what this tutorial is for. Log on to nextgen.nuaka.org. Again, that web address is nextgen.nwoca. Org. This website is where we will find today's practice tests. What we want to do first is click on the box Ohio Online Field Test Portal. Click on that box. Today we will be signing in as a guest. So we see that the session ID is guest. Our first name is guest and our student ID is guest. So please click sign in. Choose your grade level. For today's video, I will choose grade level 10. Then click yes. On this page, you will see all of the practice assessments that you can take. You may or may not be taking all of these this year. Your teachers will explain which tests you will take. For this class, you will be taking the PBA and EOI. You will take the PBA, Performance-Based Assessment, first this spring, and then the EOI, end-of-year assessment, later. Let's click on the American History PBA. We begin to see some of the settings and resources that will be available to us on this page. Notice one of the options here is print size. The higher level you go, the more zoomed in your print size will be. I'm going to leave the print size where it's at. Next, let's turn masking on. We will see how to use this later in the video. Let's look at the different color choices available to us. Again, on the test, choose a color choice that you are familiar with and comfortable with. The default will be black on white. That is what you see right now, black font and a white background. I will use that for the purpose of this tutorial, but let's look at the other choices that are available, light yellow, light blue, light magenta, reversed contrast, and white on navy. Now I will click select. This page reviews our settings. Let's make sure these are the settings we would like to use. Masking on, black on white. So I will scroll down. If you're using a Chromebook, to scroll up or down, you can take two fingers and swipe. If you want to scroll down, swipe down with those two fingers. If you want to scroll up, swipe up with those two fingers. Now I'll click, yes, start my test. This page is the test instructions and help page. These are the resources we will be examining in this tutorial. I would encourage you to pause the video at this point and read through the different tools you have available to you. Now that you've read through those tools, click begin test now. Again, I have to scroll down to the bottom. Now, let's review the test tools available to us. The first tool that I want you to examine is the question mark tool up here along the blue toolbar in the top right corner. Click on the question mark icon. 
This takes you back to the page with descriptions of all the tools. As you can see here, it includes a diagram of what you will see on your test page. Below is a description of the different tools that you'll have available to you. Let's click out of the help guide. The next feature I want to show you is the questions drop down box. That is up here on the blue toolbar. This feature allows you to jump from one question to any other question on the test. You will also be able to see if you have marked for review any of the questions to review later. I will demonstrate how to mark a question for review later in this video. I encourage you though while you take the test to qu answer the questions you understand before skipping to other questions. But for the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how I can go from question to question. Click on number four. Now if I want to go all the way back to number one, I click the question drop down and click back on number one. Before you submit your test, make sure you review all the questions in the question drop down so that you leave none that are marked for review unfinished. Now let's review the navigation tools. These are the navigation tools that you will have available to you on the new Ohio State test. They are in the top left corner of the, right underneath the questions drop down. First, let's look at the next button and the back button. To go to the next question, see I'm on question one here, I simply click next. That takes me to the next question on the test. I can continue to go to the next question and the next question. If I want to go back to the previous questions, I can simply click the back button, or again, you can use the questions drop down. After you have properly answered a question and you are comfortable with your answer, click the save button here, which is the next icon we see. This will save the answers you have to this point. Next is the pause button. Please click the pause button. As we click the pause button, notice that this attention box appears. You can pause the test that you are taking. If you pause for longer than 20 minutes, you will not be able to go back and make changes to the test you are taking. If for some reason during the test you do not make a change for 20 minutes, the test will save itself and pause automatically for you. Now if we were taking the actual test and I wanted to pause, I would hit yes. But for today's tutorial, we will click no because I do not want to pause the test. Last of the navigation tools is the end test button. This button submits the test for you. Do not click this button until you are finished with the test. Be sure to click the button once you have finished with the test. Let's stay along this top toolbar, but move over to the right side. These are the test tools that are available to us. First, let's look at masking. This will allow you to cover part or parts of the question. This would be similar to using your hand, a pencil, or piece of paper on a traditional paper and pencil test. To activate this tool, simply click on masking. Notice that the icon is lit up in red. Now, if I want to mask part of this question, I see that it's a two-part question. Let's say I want to mask part B. All I need to do is click and then drag my mouse over the part that I'd like to mask. Notice that the masking icon is still highlighted in red. That means anywhere I click will start to create masks. You may find that annoying. So once you have masked or covered up the area you want, you may want to unhighlight that masking icon. All you need to do is click on it. Now to remove these masks, I simply click on the X to X out of these boxes. And that helps me remove those. The next icon that we have is the notepad icon. The notepad icon or notes icon is located right next to masking. Many of you write notes or information in the margins or elsewhere on a traditional pencil and paper test. This allows you to do it digitally. To activate this, click on notes. 
Notice the notepad that appears. This notepad can be moved anywhere you want on the screen to fit your needs. You can type ideas that you have in the box. So to do that, I simply click in the notepad and I type my ideas. Now, if I want the notepad to disappear, but I want to keep my ideas, I simply click Save and Close, and it disappears. I can click back on the notepad and notice ideas have returned. So I'm going to cancel out of that. The next option is the line reader option that you have available to you. This would be similar to using your hand, a pencil, or piece of paper on a traditional paper and pencil text. This will highlight a line of text for you. To activate, simply click on the icon. Notice that the first line of the text is highlighted in blue. If you want to move that line reader up or down, simply use the arrows in the bottom right corner of your Chromebook. Notice I'm arrowing down and it is moving down the different lines of text. I can also move up the different lines of text. Once again, to deactivate this, all I do is click on Line Reader, and that will go away. The last tools on the Tools menu are the Zoom Out and Zoom In. Let's click Zoom In. Notice, every time I click Zoom In, it magnifies the screen for me. Now, part of the screen may be difficult to see, so I can use these toolbars along the side to slide up or down, and then along the bottom to slide side to side. If you're using a Chromebook, you can do a two-finger swipe to the right or two-finger swipe up or down in order to move what you are seeing. You may want to practice that right now. So I'm going to zoom out to return to normal view at this time. Next, we're going to review the options available to us in the context menu. So the context menu looks like the settings icon for Google. That's right here. So I'm going to click on my context menu. And notice right now, I have two options available to me. I'm going to click on tutorial. This will provide you with a tutorial on how to answer the style of question being asked. It is not a hint to what the answer is, but it is a hint on how to properly answer the question. Notice in the red box, it gives you written directions on how to answer this style of question. The video in the background will be a visual demonstration on how to do this. Each question will have this because some of these questions are going to be different than what you are normally used to answering. So I will not show you to I will not show you this entire video on the tutorial that I have made. I would encourage you to watch the video tutorials on your own or as a class today so that you are familiar with ways to answer when you take the actual test. So I'm going to X out of the video tutorial and go back to my question. The next available tool in context menu is mark for review. If I look over at the question number one in the blue box, notice how it is a full box. Once I choose Mark for Review, what this does is it folds down the corner of that blue box. This marks the question for review. Also, along the question drop down, up in the top left corner of your screen, it marks it as well so that you know to go back and review this question before you hit end test to submit your test. Once again though, I would encourage you to answer the question if you understand it before skipping to other questions. There is other context menu tools available to you that don't appear. One of these is to be able to highlight parts of the question. To highlight, you must actually click on a word and highlight it. Those three icons that just appeared on this screen will not appear on your test. Now, to highlight this word, all I do is click back on my context menu 
and I click Highlight Selection. Notice how it has now highlighted United. If there's other parts of this text that I'd like to highlight, I can do it a second way. Oh, I need to move the phrases that describe, so I know I need to be describing. I will highlight the word describe, and I will right-click. Now I can highlight the selection that way, and notice a second word is highlighted. If I want to remove this highlighting, I can go up to Context Menu and click on Reset Highlighting. I can also remove this by right-clicking on a Chromebook that is taking two fingers and tapping the trackpad. And I can click Reset Highlighting. You also have a strike through option available to you on multiple choice questions. There are no multiple choice questions on this performance based assessment practice test. I will show you how to use the strike through option later in this tutorial. But first, let's go through and see how to answer the different types of questions available to us in this tutorial. As with any test, I would always encourage you to read the directions. Read each question carefully and then examine your possible answers. So after carefully reading this test, we notice that it is a two-part question. There's a part A and a part B. Part A will match up with part A over here in this box, and part B will match up with part B in this box. So this is a drag and drop question. I need to drag these boxes and put them in their proper place. Now to do that, I simply click on the box and drag this idea and place it here. Now, to drop it in there, just remove your hand from the trackpad. Again, let's practice that one more time. Click on the word, I run my finger along the trackpad and drop where it goes. That's how you answer this. Now, I've already marked this question for review. I'm not really sure about the answer. I know I want to come back to it at a later time, so I'm glad I have that marked for review. The next type of question that you will have is one of these checks. So, again, you need to read each question carefully. Federalists and Anti-Federalists debated issues and concerns related to the proposed Constitution. Select the boxes to identify each argument as a Federalist position or an Anti-Federalist position. For years, you have been told to mark only one answer. You need to read each question carefully because for this type of question, you're going to mark Federalist or Anti-Federalist for each line. Notice I can't put the answer, I can't answer both of them. It automatically changes it. Do not only answer the first one and go on. You need to answer each row before you move on. Now, I'm comfortable with those answers, so I'm going to hit Save because I want to save and lock in those answers. Let's look at question three. Question three has lots of information here. A lot of the questions on this assessment that you will be taking will require you to look at two different pieces of information, synthesize that information, and then answer the question. So I've carefully read the question, I've looked at all of the data here, and I see that I have an extended response to write. So I am going to type in my extended response answer. This is where I will answer. So you simply use your keyboard to type in the answer. The tools available to you on an extended response, if I highlight a word here, I can make that bold by the big bolded B. I can also italicize it by the italicized I. And believe it or not, I can underline it by the underlined U. Now, to remove any of that formatting, I can remove it by clicking on that, or I can hit the Remove Format. If I want my answer to be in bullet points, I can click the bullet. If I prefer numbers, 
I can use numbers. You may also change your indentations by clicking that one to the right. This icon will move it to the left. You have the ability to cut a word. So if I wanted answer cut out, I would click the scissors. But let's pretend you didn't want to do that. Here is the undo button. Oh, but maybe I did want to. So I'll click the redo button. No, I don't. So I'll click undo. To copy that, this is your copy. It kind of looks like a duplicate. This will paste for you as well. Now, when you're typing on Google Docs or Microsoft Word, when you misspell a word, it underlines it for you. This test does not do that, but you do have a spell check option available to you. To activate that spell check option, highlight the entire passage. So I would highlight this entire passage. Then I will click on the spell check icon. Notice now the misspelled word is underlined. To get the proper spelling, I simply click on that. And it gives me a list of different options to choose. This is the where that I want to choose. I'll click on that and it will spell it properly for me. Now, I could try to type right here, but nothing will happen. I simply have to deactivate spell check by clicking on the spell check icon. For some answers, you may need special icons or special characters. Click on the special character. And you see you have lots of different options available to you. Also, as you float your mouse over the different characters, they show up in that box to the right. I will cancel out of this. Again, I feel confident with my answer here, so I will hit save. And what that does is it saves all of my answers for me. Let's move on to the next question. Again, this is a, a, an extended response question. The tools and resources available to you are exactly the same as the question I just reviewed. Now. Before I submit my test by hitting end test, I want to go back and make sure I have not marked any for review. I have, so I'll click on number one, and that's marked. That indicates to me I need to go back and finish that question. I would also encourage you to check all of your answers that you have made. Now I want to show you how to use the strike through option that would be available to you on a multiple choice question. Let's click back on the tab, that Nuwaka Next Generation tab. If you closed out of that tab, the address is nextgen.nwoca.org. I will once again click on this online field test portal, sign in as a guest, choose my grade level once again, grade 10. I will hit yes. I will click on the American History, PB, not the PBA, the EOI. The EOI, the end of year exam, has multiple choice questions. I will turn masking on. Now, I'm going to show you how different the screen looks when you choose some of these different color choices. This is a warning. So we will choose reverse contrast. I will hit select. Notice how different the screen looks now. During the test, this may confuse you. You want to avoid confusion on the day of the test, so go with the color choice you are familiar with. Now I will hit yes, start my test. Once again, these are the test instructions that I reviewed in this tutorial. I will click begin test now. Our first question here is a multiple choice question. I want to show you how to use the strike through. To utilize the strike through on this, I right click. Again, the right click is simply a two finger tap on the trackpad of the Chromebook. If I click strike through, it X's out that answer. Some of you may do this on a traditional pencil and paper test. I can X out another one by hitting strike through. If I didn't want to hit strike through and I wanted to remove that strike through, all I would need to do is right click again to undo the strike through. Let's say I believe letter B is the answer. I would click letter B and notice how it highlights that, that letter in there. 
That is how you answer a multiple choice question on the performance-based assessment. Now, I would encourage you to practice the tools we just reviewed in this video. Get familiar and comfortable with using these tools today so that you, they will help you on the day of the test. I would encourage you to go back and answer all of the questions on the performance-based assessment as practice. I would like to wish all of you good luck on the tests that you're going to be taking this spring.